dualism or duality uh, is a pretty fascinating subject and it seems like the sort of thing that goes on forever like peeling away the proverbial onion um, I uh, every day I drink this this is a glass of hibiscus iced tea um, I've noticed as I've gotten a little bit older my heart rate has increased strangely with uh, at, at different times of the day for no apparent reason and I read somewhere that hibiscus tea is supposed to be good for blood pressure regardless of whether or not it is I drink hibiscus tea and I've kind of gotten a taste for it and I like drinking it now I don't have to remind myself to drink it but it has to do with heart rate and there's sort of a dualistic angle there or non-dualistic or questioning the whole thing right then and there my heart seemingly of its own accord or circumstances or events or uh, contributing factors that are beyond my control seemingly beyond my control by the way um, my heart is increased its, its rate of pumping blood has increased um, is that a dualistic or a non-dualistic thing because supposedly my brain is in control of what my heart does but I can't I can only control my heart to a certain extent my heart rate I drink my hibiscus tea um, <clears throat> I do some meditation and breathing exercises um, there's various reasons why I do those things but one of them is when I try to carefully control my breathing often I'm consciously intervening to control my heart rate uh, a deep breath followed by a controlled out breath followed by a slight pause followed by a deep in breath followed by an out breath and a slight pause etc etc and depending on how it feels and the experience of it is important here um, I'll pause at different points. I'll pause after the in-breath or after the out-breath. It's a very intuitive thing. Um, you can't really follow somebody else's instructions when you're controlling your breath as a means to influence your heart rate or your body, I guess. Um, you sort of have to feel your way. Now, there is a dualistic, non-dualistic um, angle to this and the dualistic angle is the involuntary nature of my heart I can't really control it seemingly and yet I can intervene to control it but I can't really control it directly I can't just say or think to my heart the same way as I can send messages to my fingers to do certain things or my eyelids or whatever I can't influence my heart in that way but I can influence it if I concentrate and you know the word concentrate is an interesting one here because it's I'm concentrating various things together I'm concentrating my emotions my will um, my control over my own body um, I'm concentrating on certain aspects of my body in this case my lungs my diaphragm my posture in order to make my body more amenable to me concentrating in fact uh, you know for the obvious reason it's more difficult for me to do this when I'm on a bicycle than when I'm sitting still people you know can say that you can mentally meditate while on a bicycle but when you're dealing with the physical angle it's hard to do it unless you're sitting still so <clears throat> I am in a sense intervening in many different ways and from many different angles to control my heartbeat that's non-dualistic in a sense but there's still apparently two things there's me and then there's my heartbeat um, however it has been claimed that it is possible for you to completely control control your heartbeat but you must become completely aware of it you must be you must completely control your own body that's the hatha yoga sort of thing where you know you turn yourself into a human pretzel stop your heart from beating get buried underground for six months and they dig you up again and you're fine because you can restart your heart etc who knows but the duality of that or perhaps the non-duality of it is a fascinating continuum 
Um, and your heart is, in a sense, just a, a touchstone of for your relationship with phenomenality, with the physical universe. I do and I do not have control over my heart. I know what to do to control my heart to, within the limits that I'm capable of. Uh, for example, as I say, if I, my heart is beating too quickly, if I sit down in a chair and I make my body as comfortable and as immobile as possible, breathe in and out, after a few minutes the heart rate will drop. Well, most of the time it will. I'm also unfortunately a caffeine addict, so if I have too much coffee, uh, then uh, okay, that gets a little bit harder, but you can actually even overcome that. You can slow your heart rate down. Um, but again, the experience of it is important because it depends on the type of racing heart that you've got. In certain circumstances, you're looking for a racing heart because it's exhilarating. If I'm out on my bicycle and for whatever reason I suddenly want to go really fast, I bang, go full out, and I want my heart to beat quickly. Um, I'm intervening to increase my heart rate. Um, the obvious other example of that is, say, sexual activity. You want your metabolism to speed up. Um, and so your, you know, your your mind and a lot of other associations are are intervening in order to influence your metabolism in that regard. Um, so you want, under certain circumstances, an increased metabolism, whereas under other circumstances, an increased metabolism is unpleasant, as in the case of, say, anxiety, uh, physical or psychological. An increased metabolism can be very unpleasant. Um, in other cases, an increased metabolism is what you actually want. So you intervene to increase your metabolism, your heart rate, that kind of thing. Um, is that dualism or is it not dualism? Um, what's in charge? And where are the limits? Um, I think that it, plumbing the limits of your ability to control both your own body and um, the world around you is a lifelong vocation. It's something that I don't think any of us, I don't think human life is long enough for us to um, figure that one out, what we can and cannot control. Um, but we do know that we want to control certain things under certain circumstances and there are certain ways in which to do it. That does imply some sort of duality, but the very fact that we can control them um, also can be said to imply non-duality. Um, if I can actually intervene to the point where I can stop my heart from beating through the force of my own will, that implies that there is some sort of non-duality out there. Um, there's nothing that's beyond the control of my own mind. Um, including my own body and every aspect of it. The faith healing and all that kind of thing comes to mind as well. Um, I haven't gotten to the point where I have any confidence in any of that stuff yet, but I do know that I can intervene to control my own heart rate. But I also know that under the normal course of events, my heart rate is not something that I have a huge amount of control over or that I even bother to think about that often because it doesn't seem to be important that I actually consciously intervene in my own metabolism. So I guess this is a rambling long-winded uh, monologue about my views on dualism versus non-dualism. I have to say again, predictably enough, that I'm agnostic on the whole thing. It seems non-dualistic and yet when you look at it a certain way uh, or sorry it seems dualistic a big pardon uh, it seems dualistic because it does seem that there are other things out there but when you actually make the conscious effort you understand the limits of dualism you understand the limits or perhaps not the limits but the boundaries of dualism you understand that okay, I can actually make this thing me by the simple, say, expedient of taking my hibiscus, drinking it, 
it was once not me, now it has become me, and it will be me in a certain way. Because I've intervened. I've consciously taken steps to break down the barriers between that which is me and that which is not me. Um, that's you know, more or less the same metaphor as learning to control my breath or learning to control anything in the phenomenal universe. Um, ultimate, re ultimate reality, I think, may be beyond dualism and non-dualism, but I think that they're useful terms to help one come to grips with the entire thing. Um, as I said, you can go on on this subject forever, and people have, um, but it's a fascinating thing, and uh, it, it does, inevitably, it recoils back to yourself. You sort of say, okay, I'm looking at everything, and ultimately, um, I end up with no other choice but to look in the mirror. <laughs>